Okay, so here is a little bit of a Christmas present to everyone. As you see, I'm wearing my Christmas Dawn Cherry duds. And so I'm going to go through a bunch of features I did in the last two weeks. My formal training included being a um, teacher, educator, with five years of high school teaching and probably a dozen years at college and university. So I'm going to do my... The last set of uh, revisions was intended to be educational, not data oriented. Make your life easier to understand what's going on. So the first thing is I'm going to take a look at information from studies. There are two important changes there. The first change is we have candidates, which are suggestions to deal with something a priori, like for example, Alzheimer's disease. We can click here. And what we now have is conventional beliefs. Conventional beliefs means generally it's the art of medicine. A MD or naturopath said, oh, he has this, therefore I think this would ha this impacts that and thereby it should help. For example, he has inflammation, oh, this helps reduce inflammation. Maybe a totally different type of inflammation, but that's how the logic and reasoning goes. And, and hence, I use the word conventional beliefs. That is using that type of logic. <clears throat> Down below, we have the actual suggestions based on um, the bacteria shift reported for this condition. So it just gives you a second set of suggestions to consider looking at. Some cases you find that they are both, other cases not. For example, let's take a look at curcumin. And there we find curcumin is on the list. Not a particular high priority, but it is on the list. We could try looking at probiotics. And then we have probiotics on the list, higher value, and which ones are. So often there will be agreements. Occasionally there will be minor disagreements. Again, because the suggestions are come from people inferring from one piece of information to another piece to another piece of information, and sometimes that doesn't always hold true. Down below are is what is calculated from the microbiome shifts reported, which is I view as slightly more reliable. Okay, so that's part one. Part two is if you go over and let's go to Alzheimer's again. Um, where Alzheimer's, uh, there we are. If you click on studies, hopefully fingers crossed, it's Oops, nope, uh, that's not quite where I was wanting to go. Go, um, actually it's taxons, which is where I was wanting to go. And, the second thing you will see over here is that we now have um, all these studies, which are now hidden unless you're logged in, uh, basically showing all the studies in an easier to understand thing. Remember, bacteria have a hierarchy, just like we have continents, countries, provinces or states, um, counties, cities, villages, streets, etc. So we have the same type of hierarchy. For example, this particular street could have a high crime rate and another higher and but it belongs to a different group a city which has a lower crime rate so the result is it tries to show you the relationship and it will make your life a little bit easier and we'll come back to this once i've logged back in so that's the second thing is that this has been changed to um be easier to understand. Okay, now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually going to log in because a bunch of features shows up if and only if you're logged in. Okay, I have successfully logged in. Let's go back to information from studies again. And again, we'll go down to Alzheimer's um, and look at the taxons. And now there's a change. And what is a change? A change is your percentile ranking is beside each one if there's data about it. For example, 
Dora Longa, there's no information there, which means either it was not detected or the microbiome provider doesn't detect it at all. And what you can now see is, okay, well, yes, I'm I'm a match there. Oops, I'm definitely not a match there. So there, and it gives you a way of evaluating against all the bacterial patterns, which is easier than the old way. And the old way, if I increase display level and go back um, and we go down to Alzheimer's again so we have the same thing but now we have the studies at the bottom bit by bit and we have 178 individual lines which tends to be a little bit more um, challenging we have your percentile here but this is a consolidated easier to understand so so far so good just makes life a little bit easier now let's go on to a couple of other features if i look at a modifier nowadays and just go in and take a look at one and what will happen is you'll see we see the source of studies here and the label a couple of spots throughout things particularly in bacteria those things weren't identified this is a child which means that this bacteria was not explicitly mentioned in the study but the bacteria which it belongs to was for example this is a street which just wasn't mentioned in the crime report however the um parish or the um, area of the county it, it's in has a high, has a in this case low rate of crime report let's go over to bacteria and let's look like the bacillus and now you see here and in this case you see some cases the parents decided some cases the child but um the, for just bacteria but nothing was ex explicit for lactobacillus so the parent or the child but not that for example the child could be a particular species of lactobacillus has a positive effect so again the, this had been dropped off when i refactored it to simplify things and this week somebody came in and was upset because couldn't find this particular bacteria of a particular bacteria in the study and the reason was the name it was never named in the study the parent or the child was named in the study so that's there and depending on how rigorous you want to be you can either keep to the actual citations in which case a bookmark shows up um like that and in which case we have a explicit reference okay so never enhancement for clarity so now let's go back and look up and now i have added a new search bacteria by impact um and over there you can type in something such as butyrate and if you do a search it will go and search everything which is involved in butyrate for example this one here is one associated with butyrate you click here and you'll find that uh, somewhere on the page i will correct that right there butyrate production so to suspect your producers um butyrate so you have the ability to find out if you're trying to increase something like um, short chain fatty acid, just type that in, you get the list. If you're looking for something else or a specific condition, um, oh, let's go back wherever I was. Uh, let's go look up again. Oops. Uh, look up again and by impact. For example, if you're dealing with IBD, whoops, one second, and I've just finished fixing a bug which new pages, 
new bugs are. But put in IBD and you find you'll get all of the items which has a association with IBD in general. So um, you get that lovely information. And this is coming generally from chat GPT. So it may or may not be accurate always. Word of caution there. But if you take something like Balancia Hansaini, what you do is you'll get the details, which uh, here is the top detail, and this applies to all the bacteria or many of the bacteria. You will get a summary of what this bacteria does. Again, data is general information coming from chat um, GPT. So again, a word of caution always with it, but it can be informative to help you understand. Okay, now the next item I want to go over to is back to my profile. The next item is health analysis, which has been revised greatly and hopefully made better. Okay, let's go and take a look at it. And we'll take a few seconds for it to calculate. And what we have now is a variety of measures a racial value which most of the time you can ignore it is uh, nerdy percentile which is very easy to understand and then on the right you have information about it so uh, in terms of gut health etc um you get the um uh you get the free common indexes use and description of it you will get what compounds are being produced and where you're ranking compared to other people etc and hydrogen or lactic acid etc now how do i get the compound there's two thinkings out there one is oh you just find all the studies say a particular bacteria produces a particular compound well the problem is that generally is only a fraction of the bacteria are ever examined because some of them are very hollow, hard to cultivate in a lab Instead, I go over to the Kyoto Encyclopedia of Gene Genomics, which has actually broken down the DNA of each bacteria and determined if that bacteria is capable of producing or consuming a particular chemical. So I use that data, which I view as being far more complete, probably more accurate. They're still gotchas with it because um, whether or not the enzymes are going to be activated or not, or the bacteria to be activated for this particular thing, often depends on its environment. Bacteria will change behavior if there's a absence of food in the environment or a surplus of food in the environment. So the result is these are estimates and view them as that. And you have everything down, oxide degrading. A um, couple of things are based on multiple enzymes. So I've identified the enzyme there. Again, keg will give you what detail it is and where you are sitting um, on it. And then the usual thing down below. And now for um, Jason's recommendation, we do the same thing. So when you have not idea, you can see what the impact is. So it makes life far more information rather than say, okay, I don't have, I. it's not ideal, but what does that mean? Okay, here is a variety of the impacts Again, ChatGPT is the usual source for information, simply because there's a lot of information to be digested, etc. So that is the next lovely enhancement, which is to have all that information available. The last item I want to do is, several people have raised questions about whether or not data is correct. And as I pointed out to the same people, the problem is I have nobody doing quality control, nobody going and double checking things. That's changed. You, If you choose to volunteer, you can help contribute to the site by going and doing audit data. If you, just will show up if you have asked to be an auditor and will show up there and you, you will be explicitly identified as a person who audited it. So, and if there are questions or somebody disputed, you will be included on the emails for discussion. So when you go over, okay, did I click? Ah, there you go. Is you will go over and you will see 
some studies um, there, um, and I've somewhat intentionally kept the number. There are some studies where you have 2,000 bacteria or interactions with that, which is, uh, no, it's really lay there. So you can go in there and um, go in and take a look. Okay, here is, we have two things. We have a link on the study and we have a link on here saying this 23 reaction if i click here it'll go through and identify which modifier it is and then what it decreases etc so if you go through and you read the study um and you can get it there the fast way by just clicking here fingers crossed ah okay there um and so that is study now some cases the study is behind a paywall if you can verify everything for example here everything is named here if you can verify everything without having to buy it or if you are university type uh, have a group of people who are auditing part of it who via their university have access to most of these documents then you have Fine. So you go through and you just check to make sure. Two words of warning. One is that the modifier name and what is in the study may on some occasion be a different name. For example, um, let's go over and take a look at this one. And, oh, not this one. Some of them you will find that there's 45 different names available for that Ever case here the bacteria the name here may not be the name in the study and the reason is the same names keep changing uh lactobacillus i think is is often the lactobacillus name is being deprecated and it's broken down to a bunch of different names so the result is you will sometimes have to click here to find out if the names are the same or in time you'll get to know them by um memory so that is available for anybody who wants to be audited. Some of the features, for example, um, the search impact by there depends on your display level being raised above from um, beginners. Again, it's an advanced feature, so the, ten, the, the intent is to hide it from people that way. So I think that covers everything. So let's do a recap. Recap is in general, when you go and look at bacteria now, uh, let's take a look at oh, like the fermentum. Fingers crossed. Ah, you don't know luck there. I'll go back and I'll just do lactobacillus. That one will probably be will, will be thought. You will get a description at the top there for many of the bacteria if I can get information from it and summarize it there so you have that as a new bunch of information when you go into my profile health analysis you get a lot more information explaining the result which was the intent and when you go over to there you will if you take taxons and candidates you will also get more information there and um so you end up ideally getting more information everywhere as to um, what's going on and hopefully be more knowledgeable. Okay, at this point in time, I'll shut up and say, okay, bunch of changes. I hope trying to make this a Christmas present to everybody so that they can better understand the microbiome and all the many, 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 many bacteria involved. Okay.